Hi everyone, this is Anna Rotzenat from Flexicon and I want to show you how to do a bottleneck analysis with process mining. So let's take a look at this example data set here. It's a purchasing process. It's one of our example data sets. We have a case ID and activity name, two timestamps in this case. So let's import this data set and now the process mining tool has uh, reconstructed the process map. And let's look at all the details here uh, right now. So we see the actual flow that the process has taken um, through this process. And we can see some of the reworked loops, for example, that are happening that uh, yeah, we might not have known about. And we get the bird's eye view about the actual flow of the process after discovering the process in this way. But in many situations, we're not just interested in how does the actual process look like, but we also want to take how long does the process actually take. So what we can do is we can go to the statistics tab here um, at the top, and there you have the case duration information. So the case duration gives us the time from the very beginning to the very end of the process. For example, we can see that most cases, most purchase orders being processed take up to 16 or 17 days, mostly. But what we can also see is that there are quite a few that take much longer than that, 70 days, 80 days, 90 days, or even 100 days. So if uh, we are responsible for this purchasing process, we want to know where in the process are we actually losing so much time that we end up with 80, 90, or even 100 days throughput time, right? So what we can do is we can add a filter to focus on these long running cases. And in this case, we are using the performance filter. And let's focus on these really slow ones here. For example, let's say taking longer than 70 days. And what we can see is that that's about 15% of all our cases in the data set belong into this slow, long running category. Now let's save this analysis as a separate uh, entity. So we say bottleneck analysis. So we can give it a short name uh, here. And then we apply the filter. And what we can see now is we still see a process map, but we see the process map just for this subset of the data set, the 15% that take longer than 70 days. right? So the 92 out of the 608 from before that are really slow. And what we can see is that this rework loop has become even more dominant than before. That's certainly one of the problems that's causing these delays. But now we are actually less interested in the frequency. How frequently are we going through these different steps and paths? We want to see where in the process are we spending so much time. So we change from the frequency view on the right side to the performance view. And um, initially, let's just look at the mean duration. So the mean duration, that's the average duration, the average delays in the process. And what we can see is that um, the actual step, this rework step that we are performing so frequently is, is not taking so long. It's just 10 minutes on average. But afterwards, we have a huge delay, 14 days on average um, of waiting time. So this is idle time where nothing happens in the process. And also from other places, we can see these delays um, yeah, accumulating. And so this all points to one place in this process, which is this particular activity, analyze request for quotation. That's clearly a bottleneck in this particular process. And to find out what's behind that bottleneck, what's happening here, we have to go outside of the data, outside of the process mining tool to speak with the people who are involved. For example, it could be that they have a very high workload um, in this step and they don't have enough resources. So increasing the number of resources would be the right way to alleviate this problem. But it could also be that this is a step that's being performed by a manager um, and it's a low priority task for them. So they collect all the requests that are coming in. And because it's convenient for them, they, um, you know, they process them at once, once a month. And they don't realize the effect that this has on the rest of the process. So that's a different problem. And we would have to speak with um, this manager to, you know, explain the problem and maybe help them find a, another way of working that's helping the overall process in a better way. So process mining cannot um, automatically give you the, the root causes of what's going on, but it can show you objectively based on the data uh, where the problem areas are, for example, where the bottleneck in your process is uh, located. And 
the second thing that it helps you with is that it makes the problem visual. So it gives you this visual um, depiction of the process and that's very helpful in communicating your findings with the business unit um, for whom you've performed this analysis because ultimately those are the people who need to understand what you um, have discovered and they have to change their way of working to make any progress in this process. So process mining is very helpful in this uh, way um, to communicate such issues and also the animation can be very powerful in that respect. So let me just start this here and zoom in, in a little bit. So we're still looking at the this, these slow cases, these 15% that takes uh, 70 days or more in total case duration. And if we go a little bit more into the process, so these are the 10 months of data here that we have in the data set. Um, we can clearly see this, um, yeah, these, this kind of bottleneck emerge literally like ten, in a tangible way in front of our eyes. Every yellow dot is one case one purchase order moving through the process and this is um, then showing you where these cases are in the process based on the actual timestamps from the data set so uh, we can see you know where things are slow where things are piling up queuing up um, so that's a great visual way to communicate uh, a bottleneck to your team um, so um, <coughs> that's um, like a the one of the things that you that you want to do uh, when you communicate um, a bottleneck to other people in your organization but I want to show you two more things that will be helpful for your own uh, bottleneck analysis so let's go back um, to the to the process map and let's go back to the full data set here right now so we can go back to the to the full process here at the top by using this drop down list to change um, between the different analysis that we have done and if we look at the, the overall case durations, one thing that you can see in DISCO is that you always have the mean and the median duration. This uh, is true for the case durations, this is true for the activity durations, the waiting times in the process map, everything. And the reason for that is that um, if you look at the mean and the median case duration, you can see quite quite a difference here, right? So the mean or the average case duration is about 21 days for the full process. Um, the median is much, much lower than that. And the reason is that the average or the mean duration is quite susceptible to outliers. So for example, imagine normally processing um, a case in this process takes maybe 15 to 20 days and you have just maybe just three or four outliers that take two years or something, you know, really extreme, then this will heavily influence the mean duration and uh, make it appear much higher um, than the tip the typical processing time would be for a case in this process. The median is a much better metric of what a typical value is um, in this in this process. So it's less susceptible to outliers because it takes a typical middle value when you line up all the all the measurements um, in the data set. So in most cases you want to use the, the median duration um, and um, yeah one of the reasons why you might want to use the mean uh, duration is for example uh, people might be more familiar with it. It's uh, a, a measurement or a metric that people know more often or maybe that's the way that you measure your KPIs so you, that's what you want to use in this uh, situation otherwise I would recommend uh, to use the median now if we look at the process map uh, I want to show you a second um, tip so let's go to the the median duration here um, so we don't use the mean but we use the median to look at the delays in the process neither with the mean nor with the median um, you actually see the frequency, how frequently these paths are performed and that can be a problem, right? So for example, um, if we just take a quick look here at the frequency again, you have sometimes some very low frequent path. So this path here was followed just three times in the whole data set. So even if this particular path on average or you know as a median value takes really really long, maybe several weeks, that's not the place that you should spend your time on improving this process and you know focusing on this particular path would be in a way a waste of time. So um, if you want to analyze the delays in the process, you want to make sure you focus on the high impact areas where you can actually um, have a good uh, effect from making a change. So 
in the same way so if we look at the median metrics here again and we see there are these two rework loops right we have this one rework loop uh, where amendments are made to an existing request here on the right side we have these uh, this second one here on the left side and initially if you just look at the median itself um, or the mean it's a similar problem uh, it looks like this is the place where the biggest problem area is in the process it's 5.6 days median waiting time um, that is accumulating here while on this end it's just three days median however if we look at the frequency again you will see this is much less frequent it's just um, about 50 times that we're going through this path and 10 times as often we're going through this path so we need to factor in the, the frequency as well and the best way to do that is to use the total duration here in the performance analysis so the total duration um, is the cumulative delays um, you know across the whole data set so it adds up all the delays for all the cases uh, for all the events in the whole data set and by doing that it automatically takes into account not just the actual delays but also the frequency of them and in this way it guides you visually in to the right place so really this is clearly the big uh, bottleneck in our process here it's visually really um, yeah made um, uh, very clear this is like the thick red arrow so it guides your attention to the right place this is where you should focus on the only problem with the total duration is that the numbers that you get are not so intuitive anymore right so you can easily get months or years of uh, cumulative um, delays in the total duration and it doesn't really tell you anymore like what's the typical time that uh, we are losing here in this part of the process so to incorporate that information as well what you can best do is to keep the total duration as the primary metric but then add a secondary metric here and you can choose anyone so let's choose the median duration here for example um, so what we have now is the primary metric is still um, influencing um, the visualization so we still have the big red arrow pointing us to the right place uh, where we have the biggest impact if we make a change in this process but in small in a smaller font uh, below uh, you you see the median values as well so we can see okay um, typically it takes three days to get from here to there and we can see the 5.6 days from here to there yeah but you're not misled by by thinking that's the the biggest problem area but you clearly see that's the the biggest problem area here okay so this is what i wanted to show you um here and thank you for watching